Hello. In this short video, I'm going to look at how we can use a tool called Fiddler in order to capture some of the outgoing requests that are happening from Chocolate. Uh, so the first question is, why is this important? Uh, this is important because sometimes uh, it's not quite clear uh, what uh, Chocolate is doing or what's happening behind the scenes when Chocolate is making requests to the Chocolate Community Repository or to other repositories that you might be using. So Fiddler is a tool that allows us to intercept the requests that are being made from Chocolate as well as the responses that are coming back so that we can uh, dig in to figure out exactly what's going on. So to explain what I've got on this machine, on this machine I have got a brand new installation of Chocolatey, uh, which is the latest version, which is 2.1.0. I've also pre-installed, or I've already installed uh, Fiddler, uh, because that's the tool I want to use. Uh, depending on the situation that you're currently in, uh, you might not be able to install uh, applications or packages because uh, you're having issues, uh, but you should be able to reach out to the uh, Fiddler website and download it directly uh, and install it directly if you need to. But what I've been able to do on this machine is use the Fiddler package to get that installed. So where do we want to start? Uh, so let's explain a little bit what's going on. So on the left-hand side, I've got a PowerShell window, uh, which is when I'm going to run some chocolate commands. And on the right-hand side, I've got the Fiddler application already open. The important things to note here is that down the bottom is that it's got the word capturing at the bottom. That means it's actively capturing uh, outgoing requests. You can turn off capturing by just uh, clicking on that and making it go away. And you can turn it back on again uh, if you uh, want to start capturing uh, requests. Now, because Fiddler is running, any requests that are being by applications on this machine are going to be intercepted uh, by Fiddler and then passed on to where they're going. So in this machine, uh, when I opened up uh, Internet Explorer for the first time, you'll see that a number of outgoing requests already uh, started going out the window. Uh, start, start, started going out the window. Started going out the door. Uh, so the ones that I'm interested in are the ones that come from Chocolate itself. So if I do Choco search, for example, Winderstat, if I can spell that properly, I uh, still can't spell that properly, if I run Choco Search Winderstat, we'll see over here that there was at least one request that went out the door. But what you'll see is that we can't look at the contents of that request. That The reason for that is because Fiddler by default is intercepting, uh, or not, I said that wrong. So by default, uh, Fiddler is going to intercept all traffic. But the traffic that's coming from Chocolate CLI to Chocolate Community Repository, which is the default source, is done with HTTPS or an SSL certificate. So as a result, Fiddler can't actually look at the contents of that packages, or can't co content of those uh, requests and responses, because they are encrypted. That's the whole point in HTTPS. But what Fiddler allows us to do is it allows us to add in its own uh, SSL certificate to act as effectively uh, a man in the middle. So it can allow the decrypting of those packets so that we can view them. So the way that we can do that is by clicking on the inspectors tab over here. And then in the inspectors tab, there's a big yellow warning that says HTTP description, uh, description, HTTPS decryption is disabled, but we want to enable that. Now that's not something you'd want to necessarily do uh, on all machines in your environment, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, I am going to do it, but you can always take out the certificate that Fiddler is going to add on in your behalf uh, if you don't want it anymore. So I'm going to click on that yellow text, and it's going and it's, the option here is I want to decrypt the HTTPS uh, traffic, and then when I click OK here, it's going to, uh, maybe even just before that, so before I click OK, it's then going to prompt me with... Uh, some words, and those words are scary text ahead. Read carefully. Now you want to make sure that you uh, read through this. I've been through it a few times now, but you are doing so at your own risk. But in order to see the contents of the requests and responses that are going out the door, you will need to do this if the endpoint you're hitting is using an SSL certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. I'm going to go and, cl and click yes. I would encourage you to read all of this before you do it. And then the final one there is to click yes as well. So with that done, uh, any new requests that are made that are using uh, an SSL certificate will be able to be read. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click uh, Control A and I'm going to delete all of those requests just now. And I'm going to do that request to uh, search for Winderstat again. So this time around, uh, I see the original Tunnel 2, which is going out to community.chocolate.org, but then I see this one which is I can now see the outgoing request, so the headers, the raw content of that uh, information, as well as 
the response body. So if I look at the raw response that comes back, I will see that I get some information back from that request. Now, if you look at this, you'll see, well, it made a request to API v2, and then immediately it's got some information. Where did that information come from? Because it's not within the request and response within Fiddler. Now that's absolutely correct, but that's because of new uh, caching that we've added into the latest version of Chocolatey. So if I do Choco cache remove, it will clear that cache and then it will then make all the requests it needs to fulfill the, uh, the, the command that's being used. But while that's been happening, you'll see that there's other events happening uh, over here. Those other requests are coming from other things that are on this machine. Again, Fiddler is intercepting all of the outgoing requests that are happening on this machine. So I'm not necessarily interested in these ones, but what I should be able to do is I should be able to come over here to the Filters tab, and I should be able to say Use Filters, and then down in here, uh, I should be able to add in show only uh, internet hosts and then i want to say show only the following hosts so in this one i can put community.chocolatey.org so with that in play i should no longer see any outgoing requests other than for the ones that are targeting community.chocolatey.org now if you're doing other things with this then those fil that filter being in play will cause problems but for what i want to do uh, i want to see uh, all the requests are going out to community.chocolate.org. So if I run that uh, search window stat again, what I should see now is I should see a, a few requests going out the door. The first one is, uh, let's look at the inspectors again. So going back up to the inspectors. Uh, so over here, this is the initial request that goes out that basically says, uh, is someone listening on the source that I'm interested in? So in this case, I'm making a request to community.chocolate.org with uh, API v2 at the end. And it says, is there is, some, is someone listening? So because I got a response, uh, I can say that yes, someone is listening. So then Chocolatey CLI will then make another request. And that, another, uh, that, that further, further request is to API slash v2 slash uh, dollar sign metadata. So what this is, is this is information about what the endpoint that we're currently querying has access to, what information does it have for each of the packages? So we have information about the ID, the version, the title, the tags, the icon URL. It's effectively the makeup of the response that we get back from the queries that we're making. So with that piece of information in play, Chocolatey now knows how it can query an endpoint. Again, in this case, Chocolatey Community Repository. And the final one here is, now that I've got all of that information, Chocolatey, CLL can, Chocolatey CLI can now make a request for the information that I asked for. So if we look at this URL, what it says is, uh, actually, if I make this a little bit bigger, we said Choco Search Winderstat. So if we look at the URL, and I think I can see this in the inspectors over here. So the URL is API v2 slash search filter is latest version, order by ID search term Winderstat. So I'm asking, provide me the packages that meet the ID of Winderstat. And then in the response, we get information about, uh, so it's probably easier to look at, that, look at this in the uh, XML version of the output. So in here, we can see that there are multiple entries. So if I minimize the entry here, and then the entry here, and then the entry here, those three entries correspond to the three packages that were returned over here. So we had information about uh, Chocolatey itself, about Winderstat and WizTree. So those three pieces of information came directly from the response that came back from that initial request. So essentially, in a nutshell, that is the sort of queries that will happen when Chocolatey is being used at the command line. Now, if there is an issue because for some reason uh, the metadata uh, doesn't come back correctly or it's come back in an uh, malformed or it hasn't been able to make a connection to the server or this initial uh, request that goes out the door didn't come back with a valid response, there's all sorts of reasons that uh, Chocolatey can then not, not work correctly. Uh, but because it's when it is working correctly, we'll see those sort of requests and responses going out the door. So if we were to do, for instance, uh, Winderstat, so 
we'll see the initial outgoing request again. So again, is that is that server available? If it is, go ahead and search for the thing that is the uh, the Winder stat package. If it finds it, then go and get me the package and then get me the final pieces of information about the package so I can then download it. So at this point, Chocolate has all the information that it needs in order to uh, perform the installation. So at that point, I can say yes. Uh, and because we're filtering just on community.chocolate.org, we won't see the outgoing request if there was an application installer that needed to be done. But in this case, we have all the information that we need from a Chocolate CLI point of view in order to know what's going on. So now that I have all of this piece of information, what I could do, if you are in a situation where you are having a problem with uh, a chocolate CLI and it's, something's not working correctly, then what you can do is you can come up to file and say export sessions. And I can say export all sessions. And I can say, well, what format do I want it to, uh, to run it, to export it in? Uh, I think the best one would just be a, no, that's not actually the one I want, is it? Uh, I want to do file. I want to save all sessions, so not uh, export sessions. So the export sessions is for the actual curl requests that are being made, or a curl representation of the requests that are being made. What I want to do is I want to save all sessions. So by doing that, uh, it gives you a warning here because essentially, depending on what you've been doing, you might have been like but with Fiddler running, and let's say you did your internet banking, then you would potentially have information within that session about your uh, internet banking. That's why I uh, said I want to restrict the filter to only the ones that I'm interested in, which is community.chocolate.org. So you really only want to save that if you know that the sessions that you've got in here uh, don't contain any private information. So again, uh, due diligence on your, your, part, your, your part. But if I go ahead and click OK here, what I should be able to do is I can say uh, CCR testing as an example. That's going to save it as a session uh, archive. And I'm just going to put that up on my desktop just now so I remember where it goes. And then if I go ahead and uh, delete all of those sessions, if you were to then send that uh, SAS file to me or to someone else on the Chocolatey team, we could then go to that desktop, find that uh, exported uh, list of sessions and then reload them into our ver version of Fiddler so that we can see the uh, requests that are being made. Now at that point I think I'm right in saying that if you hadn't decoded or decrypted the uh, the sessions or, or the, the requests in the right hand side in the inspectors tab, we wouldn't be able to decode it because it decoded based on the uh, SSL certificate that's in installed on your machine. So it would be good to be able to, uh, if you click on that decode so that it goes into the session, uh, because if I go ahead and do this the, another time round, I'm gonna save this session again. So I'll save this as CCR testing uh, one. So this time round, we did decode that one. So if I click that and close that and then reload the session again, Going to load the archive if I do CCR testing one. So at this point, if I click on this one, then it has been able to decode it. So I didn't, it, 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 it's able to do it because um, it's there, right? It didn't have to decode it because it's already stored within the session. So, all of this being said, hopefully this has been useful. Uh, this has really been uh, a very, very whistle stop tour of what Fiddler provides. Fiddler is much more capable uh, at replaying requests and capturing more information about the request. But for what I'm illustrating here, it's really about just understanding what requests are being made when chocolate is being run on a machine in order to allow for additional fault finding suggestions for uh, things that might be going wrong on your machine. Um, if there are any follow-up questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, but for now, I'm going to call this uh, done at the minute. And hopefully, if you can, if you can provide some uh, archive files with the requests that are being made when chocolate is running on your machine, we might be able to provide some additional uh, fault-finding suggestions in order to move forward. So with that, I'm going to say that that's it. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you later.